Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Miss School. Today, I am bringing you a 10.1 Miss Weaver Monk guide. This is for the casted version. I will do another guide for fist weaving and probably a separate one for solo shuffle since it uses a different build. But with that said, let's jump right into the video. Quite a few things have changed in 10.1 for Miss Weaver, so I just want to quickly go over what has changed. Probably the major differences between 10.0.7 and 10.1. Uh, the first one is Song of Chi-Gi's moved to the class talent tree on the left-hand side. You now have to choose between Ring of Peace or Song of Chi-Gi, which, in my opinion, a little biased, I think it's a terrible change. I really miss having Song of Chi-Gi and Ring of Peace. I get it. People have less CC. Maybe they want us to have less CC. I get it. But this is a really unfortunate choice that we have to make. Uh, as far as on the Miss Weaver side, they made Chrysalis. They removed Chrysalis from the PP talents and made it a choice node with Chrysalis and Burst of Life. Same with Nourishing Chi and Common Coalescence. So this is where Common Coalescence used to be. And now you have to choose between that or Nourishing Chi. That's pretty much the major changes from the talent tree. Our Vivify got a 30% buff, which is really good. Our Cleave healing from Invigorating Mist did get nerfed slightly which is annoying because it's a nerf, but I think overall it's not that bad. And I think that's pretty much it for the major changes to Miss Weaver. We did get two PvP talents. We got Zen Spheres, I'll talk about later. And we also got Fey Accord, which is mostly going to be probably used for Fist Weaving. I didn't really use it too much, but it's still an option. And that is pretty much it for all the changes to Miss Weaver this patch. I always start these videos by saying why you should play Miss Weaver, and nothing really changes from video to video. I think Miss Weaver is by far one of the most fun classes you could possibly play in the game. Whether you're fist weaving or mist weaving, it doesn't matter. I think both are very fun to play and I feel like they're kind of they're pretty rewarding when you can master it. Um, when you play mist weaver, especially in solo shuffle, I think if you learn how to fist weave and mist weave, you can beat pretty much any team, any any single team. As long as you don't choose one and you can learn both and you can just master both of them, I think you just have the option to just run every team down. In threes, I think Miss Weaver is really solid with our force that we're going to be getting some mana. So one of our weaknesses has been mana a little bit, and now we're going to you know be able to not run out of mana as quickly, which is going to be really nice. But overall, I just find Miss Weaver a lot of fun to play. Love the mobility, love the healing, love the animations, love everything about it. Ring of Peace is my favorite spell in the game. So only a little bias here, but Miss Weaver is by far the most fun spec in the game. Next, we have best races. In 10.1, they did some CC reduction. They also nerfed Orc Racial. However, if you're going to be Horde, Orc is by far the best race you can be. Even though they nerfed it by 50%, the hardiness that makes it so suns on you are reduced, they, it's still good. It's still 10% sun reduction on you, and Miss Weavers are very weak in stuns. So if you're going to be Horde... 100% and you want the best race, go Orc. If you don't want to go Orc, you can go Undead. Undead is also very, very good. I think it's actually really good in Solar Shuffle. Uh, Will the Forsaken getting you out of Fears, Charms, and I think uh, Sleep Effects is just really solid. It's amazing. So those two are my favorite options for Horde. I've played Panda. I've played Goblin. Um, I've played, played Blood Elf. I don't think anything really comes close to how good Orc and Undead are. So I would play one of those two races if you are Horde. You have a few more options if you're playing Alliance. So right now, I am Night Elf on my main. However, with the four set that are, we are getting in 10.1, it gives you mana based on how big your your mana pool is. And that Gnome has a 5% larger mana pool. So if you're trying to min-max, especially since Balance Druids, I think are going to be good too. I think I'm going to go Gnome on my main. Like, no joke. Because you're going to get more mana in the long run. And I think Boomy is going to be really, really insane. So Gnome is really good. Night Elf is really good. Obviously, you have Shadow Meld, which makes you drops combat so you can drink. So even if mana is still an issue, you can drink instantly. You can you just have a lot, a lot of good ways to use Shadow Meld. So... One of those two races is good. Human, of course, always good. It gives you extra stats. You get extra haste, crit, mastery, and verse. So, again, and then you also get will to survive, which gets you out of stuns. So, again, that's another good option, too. If Assassination Rogue, Feral Druid, Affliction Lock is insane, Dark Iron Dwarf or Dwarf is really good. We're really kind of just up to whatever meta is when it comes to races. Usually, if casters are good, Night Elf is good because you can just um, completely shut down one of the goes if you can shut them out to ACC on you. If boomies are good, gnomes obviously gonna be good. If obviously those casters are good, you know, dwarf or dark iron dwarf, and then human, I think just overall is a good option. But I, it's really up to you for alliance. I'm probably gonna go either gnome or night elf, but it just depends on the meta. Now, the reason it's taken me so long to come up with this video is because I have been going back and forth on what stats to play as a Mistweaver. I have tried haste first and I have tried verse mastery, and I think they both feel really good, but in my opinion. 
I think Verse Mastery is better. The reason for this is because when I'm actually healing, it feels like my healing spells are actually doing something. When if I need to go for your Thunder Focus to Enveloping Mist, which makes it instant, it feels like my Envelop Mist is actually healing rather than doing a small heal and the hot is strong but it's also really weak to purges because if you get purged on your renewing mist and your enveloping mist you're just losing out on all of your healing like you're relying so heavily on your hots that i just don't think it's worth it so i've been playing first mastery now that we've talked about stats i want to talk about gear very quickly so with 10.1 they added a new embellishment that i would highly recommend now an embellishment is what you can make on your crafted gear so if you can go to the crafting order make some gear you can put an embellishment on it and you can have two active on your gear at the same time what i do is i since i'm first mastery i made the precog embellishment on my on my belt which i don't think is the best slot I actually think it might be good on shoulders, but we'll have to see when the tier set comes out. But what this does is when you juke somebody, you gain 15% haste and become immune to CC interrupts and pushbacks for four seconds, which is just absolutely insane. So this is really good. And then the other embellishment I use is the, I don't know the name of this one, but it makes it so when I'm above 90% health, I get 249 mastery. Again, really good. I also crafted it on the boots because there's no verse mastery boots. Um, outside of that, just going for verse mastery, you're going to want the tier set gear. So tier set, you can look at going to raids, going to Shadowlands, and then going to loot. And then this is where you'll find our tier set. So we're going to get a lot of mastery from the helm. And then there's some with versatility. Yeah, the shoulders have versatility. The chest doesn't, but it does have mastery. And then the, the gloves are versus mastery. So I think after looking at the tier set, you're going to want the helm, the shoulders, the chest, and the gloves. And then you're going to just want PvP gear on your legs. So I actually think the belt was fine. I think the belt was fine. And then also have the boots versus mastery. So you have a ton of versus mastery, a ton of haste. Usually that's that's about fine. And I think the tier set's going to be worth it to run as well. Even though every tier set is nerfed by 50% PvP, you're going to get one and a half one and a half percent 1.5 percent of your mana back over three seconds which is just really good and then it has an internal cooldown of six seconds so over the course of an arena you're going to have you're going to proc that quite often you're going to get a good amount of mana back um so yeah tier sets i think are worth it that's what that's how i'm going to gear this season as well just go verse mastery try to get to about 10 percent haste and then you should be fine I'm going to go through the monk talents on the left hand side here. I'm going to highlight anything that's important. Feel free to ask me any questions if you want. This is the overall build though and I'll have it linked in the description. Nothing too crazy with this build. You're going for short leg sweep because I think you know the longer the increased radiance and the cooldown reduction is really nice. You're going to go for stronger vivify and instant vivify as well because that's just really important. The more instant healing you have the better and I'll show you a little trick with one of the talents over here with the instant vivify. And then you have your in-cap, your kick, your fort brew. I use the uh, the longer version of fortifying brew, even though I die through the six-minute version. So it might actually be worth to just go for the four-minute version. But yeah, fort brew here is really good. Go for touch of death. You get your two major defensives, which is diffuse magic and damage harm. Diffuse magic, very, very strong versus casters. It reduces magic damage you take by 60%. And then any dots on you get reversed back to the caster. So if you're playing against an affliction warlock and they have an unstable affliction on you and you press this, it's actually going to get reversed onto the warlock i have used that to sometimes be aggressive i have um again this is a flex these these two right here are kind of flex points if you feel like you're not gonna you kind of need to fuse match to get to escape from reality and you want to escape from reality but this part right here dampen harm you can move this around wherever you want if you're not playing into something that you think is going to kill you however i think better safe than sorry so dampen harm reduces all damage you take by 20 to 50 percent for 10 seconds with larger attacks being reduced by more so if you're hitting if you're you know, going to something like the Destro Warlock that, again, Chaos Bolts are kind of doing a lot of damage or anything that does has just big crits. Damned Harmony is really good. If you don't want to play it, you could probably put in Strength of Spirit, but, again, better safe than sorry. And then you go for Escape from Reality. So this this is what gives you double ports. You only need one point in this. The, the second point is good for the extra Vivify healing and mana or just the extra Vivify healing, but I just put one point in it because you just, you just, you're only doing it for the double port, uh, you know? So this is, this is the talent that allows you to put your port down and you get to port and then you get to port a second time. So only put one point into there. Um, and then you get save them all, which makes it so when you, you heal somebody that's below 35% health, you gain 20% more healing for the next four seconds, which is good. And then you obviously go for your statue. So again, the left-hand side, nothing too crazy going on here. Nothing. This is a pretty standard build that you can be running every single game. 
Next up, we have the right-hand side, which is the Mistweaver talent. So again, nothing too crazy going on here. I do believe this is the best build if you're running Verse Mastery. Again, I'll go through it and highlight some things. Obviously, you go for your Life Cocoon, and then these three talents are kind of what buff your Life Cocoon a little bit. So this makes it so when you Life Cocoon somebody, you put Renewing Mist and Envelope Mist on the target. So I press Life Cocoon, I get my Renewing Mist, and I get my Enveloping Mist. Next one, Common Coalescence. What this does is every time you heal with Soothing Mist, your Life Cocoon absorption is increased by 3%, stacking up to 50 times. They almost removed this. This patch would have been so sad, but you could see um, where's my stacks right here. So it, it this makes Life Cocoon massive, and there's a lot of good things you could do with this. One thing you can do is if you're feeling like you're running out of mana, what you can do is you could put a li giant life cocoon on somebody and then go and run for a drink because the absorbs the absorb on life cocoon is freaking insane. I mean, I'm talking like 700k, 800k life cocoons with it's based off of health percentage. So the more health you have, the bigger your life cocoon is going to be. And then the last one is Chrysalis. So this used to be our PvP talent, and this reduces the cooldown of Life Cocoon by 45 seconds. I think it's just better. It's just way better than Burst Alive. So uh, this is kind of the route I take. Over, over here now, uh, you're going to go for your Thunder Focus T. You're going to get your Invigorating Mist because that's what gives you the Cleave Heal with Vivify, which I'll explain in the rotation. You're going to go for Mastery of Mist to give your Renewing Mist two charges because, again, that's really good. Restoral versus Revival. I actually, by default, go with Restoral. So Restoral is really good. It's, it's basically Revival that you could use while stunned, but it doesn't dispel any Magic Dots, which is fine because... Most comps don't really have many dodge you want to dispel. The only time I would play Revival is if you are playing against an Affliction Warlock, maybe even an Ellie Shaman. But anything else, I play Restoral just because you can heal while you're stunned and kind of buy your team extra time and you could heal. So, you know, maybe you don't have to use a cooldown. Uh, uplift your spirits, uh, um, overflowing mist. So this makes it so your Enveloping Mist heals the target for 2% of the max health each time they take damage. Just a good passive to have for your Enveloping Mist. Go with Yulon, go with Celestial Harmony. This is what makes it so that it puts little cheek cocoons on people. And then it's a really good hot that increases your healing you deal to people or to your teammates. Mist Trap makes it so your envelope mist duration is increased by a second and the bonus healing is increased by 10%. And then down here, this is where you kind of up up above this row. This row and above is pretty standard. Below these, la these last three rows is where you can kind of change things up a bit. But this is what I feel is the best for Miss Weaver. Uh, first, I go with Jade Bond, which I don't go with short loot Yulon. I, I don't. I think you just you don't you don't gain mana from it. You the long duration of Yulon is just better in my opinion, and it buffs the healing of your soothing breath. So it just it makes Yulon an even better cooldown. Oh, hello. Oh, come on, come on back here. Oh, where do you go? It's okay. Um, that obviously Cloud of Focus. So Cloud of Focus is the bread and butter of Mistweaver, of Cast and Mistweaver. And what this does is every time you use Vivify or Enveloping Mist, you get a buff. Each stack reduces the mana cost of your next Vivify and Enveloping Mist and increases the healing by 20%. So, and it stacks up to three times. So every time you Vivify or Enveloping Mist, you get a stack. The one downfall is that when you stop channeling Soothing Mist, the stacks go away, which is very, very unfortunate. And then I go with Resplendent Mist because, again, we're going for Mastery here. So Gust of Mist has a 30% chance to do 100% more healing. We're going to take that every time. And from there, you can kind of choose where you want. You could, So I could drop these two real quick. And then over here, we have Thunder Focus T or Focus Thunder, which makes it so your Thunder Focus T empowers two spells, which is great. And then we have Peaceful Mending, which is just insane, which makes it so allies targeted by Soothing Mist receive 50% more healing from your Enveloped Mist and Renewing Mist effects, which, again, is just crazy. So you, all you have to do is channel on them. And you're just doing 50% more healing with your Envelope Mist Renewing Mist, which is crazy. And then you go for your Tier of Mourning, which makes it so your Vivify um, or Envelope Mist has a chance to uh, spread the Renewing Mist on somebody. And then increase the healing of Vivify through your Renewing Mist, which is your Cleave Heal. Um, and then you have these two points right here. So these two points are your flex points. I'm always going to give you options depending to change your build. I'm not going to say this is the only build you play. So you get you, you pretty much have two points where you can put it wherever you want. So I'll give you some options. Personally, I like the Tea of Serenity because then you get four bonus heal. You get four empowered spells from your Thunder Focus Tea, which I think is just insane. It's just freaking insane. Um, and then I put one, the other one, in Mending Proliferation, which makes it so each time Enveloping Mist heals has a chance, uh, has a fifty percent chance to spread to an injured ally. So with Enveloping Mist, what that does is when Enveloping Mist is on a target, that per that target takes forty percent more healing from your other spells. So I would normally 
play those two. Some other options, you could probably go like T of Serenity and a second one into Rapid Diffusion. You could drop it and you could even go Shailen's Gift and go into Shaha's Lessons. That's a good option. You could put two into Secret Infusion for more stats. Again, there's a lot of options you can go with and every option is fine really all you're trying to do the goal is to just do more healing so every other option does more healing i kind of like the more consistent healing sometimes i do drop many proliferation if i feel like that it's only single target healing so if it's single target healing there's really no point to many proliferation so i'll put a second to rapid diffusion but for the most part this is kind of the standard build that i've been running it's been working i like it a lot this is the best build in my opinion for verse mastery if you have any questions or any other alterations like please let me know i'm more than happy to adjust or kind of mess around with other builds next up we have pvp talent so pvp talents we have a lot of them we have a few good ones that we kind of switch between i'll try to give you the defaults i play pretty much every game I play Peace Weaver. Peace Weaver is so good. And before you ask me, yes, it is read out. It still works with Restoral. I promise. I wouldn't play it with Restoral if it didn't work. It still works. You still get the buff. Team still get the buff. It does work with, work with Restoral. So when you get stunned, what you can do is if you Peace Weaver while stunned, you can immune magic effects. For example, Freezing Trap from Hunters. Follow up CC from Shadow Priests like Silence or Fear. And, and, it, and it helps your teammates become immune too if they get healed. So if you're stunned and you restore and you give your buff your your teammates peace weaver which makes them immune to magic effects they'll be immune to damage cc so it, it's really good for helping your teammates stay alive and immune cc on you it reduces the cooldown of revival or restore by 50 percent as well so it's a minute and a half cooldown for revival and restore and it's they just got buffed so they could, they do way more healing which is great so i pretty much do that pretty much every game almost every game almost every game peace weaver unless unless i'm playing against like Windwalker Arms Warrior, where there's literally no magic damage. I won't play it, but versus anything with magic damage, Peace Weaver is really good. We got a new talent, Zen Spheres, which I have been messing around with a lot and I like it a lot. So I'm just going to just, I'm just going to put this over here, just make these two my default talents. So we have Peace Weaver and Zen Sphere. So what Zen Sphere does is you put a sphere over a target. You can put one on a teammate and one on an enemy, but only one can be active each at the same time so sphere of hope increases your healing done to the target by 15 percent. that's it that's insane when you put it on an enemy target deals 10 percent less damage to you and takes 10 percent increased damage from all sources so this is just i i cannot believe it so yeah let me put war mode on so i can show you so what this means is i'll put zen sphere myself boom 15 percent more healing from me that's it uh, the, you can't purge it it costs no mana there's no cooldown so Whoever you put this on is just taking 15% more healing from me. So what you're what, what you're gonna do with this is you're gonna obviously you're gonna maintain it on whoever's taking damage. I think it might be kind of rough to take this just because it costs a global. It might be rough to take this versus teams that have spread like cleave damage or like spread damage because it's only it, you can only put it on one person and it's a lot of globals, right? Like I mean maybe not for this one, but for Zen of Despair it might. Um, and then you have sphere of despair which makes it so when you put it on an enemy the target deals 10 percent less damage to you and takes 10 percent increased damage from all sources so that's right this right here zen sphere right or uh sphere of despair this target is going to take 10 percent more 10 percent more damage from everything and then does 10 percent less damage to you so this is i think this is good it's crucial to use this when your team is using their burst cooldowns if you know for example you can't maintain it the whole time it's fine but if you're being targeted by somebody put it on them like let's just say it's a demon hunter that's that's trying to hit you i would just maintain it on them make sure they do 10 percent less damage to you and then you could also use use it for helping with kills which is really really nice um so peace weaver and zen sphere are kind of like my go-to's i have felt like for pvp talents which leaves the third as Again, whatever you're queuing into. So Eminence, obviously, really good against Hunters. So Hunters so that they can't stun trap you. Or Rogues so that they can't stun you. And then you get put into a poly or something. Or they can't swap to you. So Eminence is really good for survivability or avoiding crowd control. If you're playing against Casters, Zen Focus T, just good. You know, you can't get kicked for the, um, what, 5 seconds every 30 seconds. So it, it's really, really good. And then Grapple Weapon versus Warriors. So those are the last three I would play. The, the other ones I wouldn't really use. The, those are the main ones I would take. So, and let's just say I'm playing into Warrior Windwalker, I would drop Peace Weaver and go Eminence. So this would be what if I was gonna play into something that it doesn't have any magic damage, but I feel like might can you know potentially might swap to me. That's what I'll play. 
before I talk about rotation, I just want to talk about our important healing spells. That way you kind of understand what I'm talking about when I talk about them. So the first one is a expel harm. This is a small heal. I, I, I like it, but it, it's not used too often where when you're channeling Soothing Mist, it's instant or it, it heals your target and yourself. And if you don't use it, it'll just, if you don't use it with Soothing Mist, it just heals you. It's just a good little small heal to have. It's nothing, not really a crucial part of rotation, but it, it can be good if two people are taking damage. Uh, Restore, we talked about, it heals everybody. It doesn't dispel at anything besides poison and diseases, but you can use it while stunned. So very, very good. Also, it works with Peace Weaver. So... It makes your team, whoever you heal with it, it makes them immune to magic effects and um, it makes you immune to CC, damage, everything like that. Soothing Mist, obviously our main heal. You're going to want to Soothing Mist when you're pretty much healing at all times. That's just your main heal source of making your healing spells instant. Vivify. So Vivify is, again, is it that this is your actual main heal. Without channeling Soothing Mist, you're, it's, you know, castable right here. 1.4 seconds, but with Soothing Mist, it's instant. Also, every 10 seconds, you get an instant one with Vivacious Vivification. So you, I do have a weak aura to track this. All my weak auras are in the description. A link to it. Again, instant Vivify, which is great. One little trick, though, with Renewing Mist, which I'll talk about. So Renewing Mist is our main hot. I'll show you right here. Is the main hot. You could, you, you're you going to have two charges of it, and you could put it on pretty much anybody. There you go. We put it on two people. If you Vivify one person... It's going to heal these guys right here. I don't have floating combat, floating healing text enabled, but I can just to make it a little bit easier. So this is my healing, renewing mist. I want to put renewing mist. Does anybody have renewing mist over here? No. So we're going to heal this person right here. And then this, these guys over here with renewing mist get healed in my Vivify, which is this talent right here. So it's very, very strong. Very, very good. That's why it's so important to have renewing mist up on as many people as possible. And velvet mist is your strongest hot but it costs a lot of mana so keep that in mind you're it, you do not want to spam velvet mist just because of the mana cost but what it does is it puts a hot on them and then it increases healing received from your other spells by 40 percent. so what you're going to want to do normally is get like uh because you are playing life cycles so life cycles as well uh, makes it so when you envelop mist it reduces the mana cost of your next vivify by 25 percent, and then when you vivify it reduces the mana cost of your next enveloping mist by 25 percent. so that's really good if you vivify you're going to get a buff boom and Velpin Mist reduce mana cost reduced by 25%. And then you're just going to go for big healing here. And then you get using the Velpin Mist and then Vivify. And then you just keep weaving those buffs back and forth. And you just have a ton of healing. It's so good. It's so good, especially when you have Velpin Mist up. Um, Yulon, again, a pretty big cooldown, three minute cooldown. When you use her, you're going to put some shields on people. I don't know if anyone got the little chi cocoon. It, it's kind of weird when you're not in arena. I don't know why. Um, but what she does is when you use Enveloping Mist on somebody, they're going to get the Enveloping Breath hot, which makes it so that that person takes an, an additional 10% healing from your, from your healing spell. So very, very strong cooldown. You don't want to spam Enveloping Mist during it, but if you know if you're, the other team is letting you free cast, try to get a Vivify to get the life cycle buff, and then Enveloping Mist. So that's very, very strong. Also, one big part of our healing that isn't actually a spell, it's a passive, is our mastery. So Renewing Mist, Envelop Mist, Spell Harm, Restoral or Revival, and Vivify cause Augusta Mist healing the primary target for 23,000 healing. It's going to change depending on how much mastery you have. And this is why our mastery is so good. Every time you press these buttons, you're going to get a second heal. That is your mastery. See, a little bonus healing from our mastery. It's really, really good. Very, very powerful it's the reason why I go versus Mastery because when I use instant spells like Vivify without using Cloud of Focus, it still feels like I'm healing well. And I know I might have spoken a little fast when talking about it, but these spells also interact with your talents. I'll talk about some important talents to keep just to be aware of when you're when you're healing. So again, I talked about life cycles. I spoke about this. What you're gonna want to try to do in your rotation is weave in the instant vivify. So with vivacious vivification. So we get the instant vivify. You're going to get the reduced mana cost if your next envelop missed by 25% just because of life cycles. And this stacks with Cloud of Focus. So th these are the two main talents that you're going to be using. I mean, that you need to pay attention to when you're healing on your Miss Weaver uh, and you're casting. Because that stacks with the healing reduction from Cloud of Focus. And with the stacks of Cloud of Focus, you're going to get mana reduction on everything. So if I go for an instant vivify and get a life cycles buff... And I go for an envelop mist. I get one stack of cloud of focus, and I could just keep going. And the mana cost on my next envelop mist is 3,600, down from 9,000. Some buttons you want to keep track of 
life cycles buff and the stacks your cloud focus this is what's going to help you and enable you to keep your team alive longer without using as much mana um be, care, be also be aware of invigorating mist which makes it so vivify does our cleave heal so you get renewing mist on your teammates of course very important and then you heal and then it'll heal anybody with uh, renewing mist so it's really good it also heals the person with renewing mist so if you heal somebody with renewing mist on them it also heals them a second time as well so that's kind of where the the beauty of our rotation comes in is you just keep your renewing mist on as many people as possible and then you start healing with your vivify you get strong cleave healing as well as single target healing and it's very easy to keep people alive when you're able to free cast for at least like two or three globals with your cloud of focus healing rotation so i want to talk about our healing rotation i'm going to do my best to make sure there are no questions at all about how to heal on your Mistweaver because I really, I enjoy how fluid the Mistweaver rotation when you're casting is. It's very, very nice. So I, I mentioned it a few times, Renewing Mist, your bread and butter hot. You're going to want to keep this up as, on as many people as possible. And you also have two charges. So you get your two charges. Always, at least always have it recharging. You, you know, if, even if you can only get one out, that's fine. That, that is perfectly fine. From there, you're just kind of evaluating the situation. So if someone's just starting to take damage, I'm just going to just go for a Soothing Mist, Vivify. That's fine. We're good, right? We're, we're, we're chilling. We get one stack of Cloud of Focus. We get um, the buff from Life Cycles for our Enveloping Mist, and we're, we're good. Um, I obviously want to keep my Renewing Mist up. And then if someone starts to take damage, you might want to use an Enveloping Mist, especially with uh, one or two stacks of Cloud of Focus. You get the Mana Reduction. And you get the healing increased. And that is pretty much the healing rotation. Keep your renewing mist out. Use your vivify to get the cleave heal. And if someone starts to die, use your enveloping mist. Where it starts to get a little bit more complicated is with your thunder focus T. So I haven't mentioned thunder focus T, but we'll talk about it really quick here. So this is a 30 second cooldown. What it does is when you press it, for your spells become empowered. So when you use thunder focus T with enveloping mist, it'll immediately heal your target with 30 for 37,000 healing and is instant cast. So normally enveloping mist is, you know, you have to cast it or you have to use soothing mist to you make an instant. If you use it with thunder focus T it's instant. You don't need to use soothing mist to make an instant. Um, the next one is renewing mist. So the duration is increased by 10 seconds. I don't really use that that often. Actually, I never use that ever. So I don't really use Thunder Focus C with Renewing Mist. Um, the next one is Vivify costs no mana. So this, that's where it starts to get really good and I'll show you why. And then oh, we actually got a really good proc here too. So we got to double Vivify, but I'll, I'll show, I'll show you, uh, why it's so good. The next one is Rising Sun Kick cooldown reduced by nine seconds. Uh, very rarely don't, I don't actually ever use that when I'm, when I'm casting and then Essence Font channeled a hundred percent, hundred percent faster. I don't use Essence Font in Arena. I don't have Essence Font in my bar. So, um, I don't use that. I basically just use Thunder Focus T with Enveloping Mist or Vivify. And I'll show you why. So Vivify costs no mana, right? If I use Thunder... And then on top of that, don't forget, we have two charges of Focus Thunder, which makes it so Thunder Focus T empowers our next two spells. And we have T of Serenity, which makes it so Thunder Focus T empowers two additional spells, which either Renewing Mist, Envelop Mist, or Vivify. We're a little sad if it empowers our Renewing Mist, it's fine though, because the extra duration is nice, but you know, obviously we, you get more value out of the Vivify or Envelope Mist, but let me show you, let me show you what you can do. I, I, I love, I, I freaking love casting Mist Weaver. So get our new Mist out. So let's just say someone starts dying, right? I normally I'll go for an instant Vivify just to get instant heal and I get the, the, um, life cycles buff and now Thunder Focus T. Now, if they start dying, the buffs I just got are Envelop Mist and Vivify. So I'll go for an Envelop Mist to get the bonus healing. And then this Vivify costs no mana. Boom. Costs no mana. But I still have another charge of Thunder Focus T because I only used the Envelop Mist on it. So another Vivify. And that costs no mana. And then you could just use Envelop Mist again. So for pressing one button, I got two free Vivifies and an Envelop Mist. Keep so that's crazy because Vivify costs no mana. So what you can do with Cloud of Focus, since you get a stack of Cloud of Focus every time you use Vivify or Enveloping Mist, you could use Thunder Focus T, Vivify, Vivify, costs no mana. These cost no mana, and then Enveloping Mist. And I'll show you in four seconds what that looks like. So again, take a look at my mana. I'm at 100% mana right now. I'm gonna go for, again, Renewing Mist, Renewing Mist. My teammate starts dying. I'm gonna go for a Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus T. I got Empowered Enveloping Mist. So I go for a Vivify, Vivify, cost no mana, go for an Enveloping Mist. 
So for 1% mana, I did about 100k plus healing for 1% mana. Because again, the, the Thunder Focus team makes it so you vivify cost no mana. You get two stacks of Cloud of Focus with that that costs no mana. It reduces the mana cost of your Velvet Mist by 40% and you have the life cycles buff. So I know that's a lot. And I the Mistweaver rotation is is pretty complicated once you start to practice it but once you practice it you it just it just clicks you just start to understand it and you just keep doing it over and over again so again i'll practice it again teammates teammates are dying got my renewing mist out i'm gonna go for a soothing mist thunder focus t i get a buff for my enveloping mist and enveloping mist so this is insane so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go for an instant vivify cost no mana right um so it costs no mana to vivify i'm gonna go for it again and then enveloping mist and that one just it costs one one percent mana you can even go for another one but it's just insane. You're looking for your, your life cycles buff, your cloud of focus buffs, and then what buffs you get from Team Serenity. And you can do so much healing. I know that was a lot, so I'll do a quick recap. Pretty much what you're trying to do is put your ring mist on as many teammates as you can. Use your Vivify for single target and cleave healing because it's going to heal whoever has your ring mist on them. If your teammates start dying, use your enveloping mist to get the bonus healing from it. And if they really start dying or you need the extra healing, use your Thunder Focus T on your enveloping mist to get the burst healing or if you want to save mana use a vivify and then enveloping mist because you're going to use the life cycle you're going to get the life cycle buff and the cloud of focus stacks i do get asked often what my instant healing rotation looks like and i'll show you so do keep in mind remember our mastery does proc or proc but is done whenever you use pretty much any of your healing spells so let's just say there are multiple kicks available and i want to heal somebody i would normally go for renewing mist because it's a hot but it also applies our mastery i can even let me get in, in combat just to show you so i'll have put renewing mist on somebody get the mastery healing i'll go for an instant vivify with our vivacious vivification and then i'll go for a thunder focus team enveloping mist because i've got the buff from life cycles to make it so it costs uh less mana and then normally by that time i have another instant vivify and then i can do another instant enveloping mist so you just keep going back and forth back and forth and then i got an empowered renewing mist and i'll just use that again so i did is this my healing i did 975k healing i did almost a million healing instantly just from using my instant vivifies and it's just instant vivify envelop mist instant vivify envelop mist and just do that over and over get the healing from your renewing mist as from the hot as well as the mastery and your healing is freaking insane now that we have our healing rotation down i want to talk about our primary cooldowns that we're going to be using there's pretty much two or three cooldowns that we're going to be using life cocoon is the major one that you normally save for last because you could use on anybody in the arena but what this does is put it puts a huge absorption shield on somebody so very, very good. Very, very powerful. I would highly recommend it for whenever there's kicks available or your teammate's low or they're using some kind of burst cooldown and you can't heal through it. Life Kakuna is normally my go-to. You're also going to have Yulon here. So Yulon makes it so you put an extra hot on somebody and it makes it so your Envelopment Mist costs 50% less mana while it's active. So what I'll do with Yulon, if you want a little bit more instant healing, is you can go for an instant vivify Thunder Focus T Enveloping Mist, right? Oh, I forgot to press Yulon, but right here and then you get the extra hot from the enveloping breath extra healing extra tick it's just insane and then you just keep healing and then you get the instant vivify back and you just have so much healing throw renewing mist out there as well and your overflowing mist is going to be healing too it, you just do so much healing you do so much healing with you on up and it lasts 30 seconds so very very good very good for men as well it, she does that 50 percent mana reduction does cause does work with life cycles and cloud of focus so for very little banner, you can do a ton, a ton of healing. And then finally, you have Restoral slash Revival. And again, this one, with Peace Weaver, it's just a no-brainer. It is so good versus any class with magic damage. Some cool things you could do with it. You could use Re Restoral to immune the hunt, which is really, really good. You could use it to uh, avoid CC, like uh, Freezing Trap, Polymorph, Fears. Any any magic CC or damage is really good. And then obviously you can immune damage. So if you see a Chaos Bolt midair, you can immune it. If you see anything midair, you can immune it. You see any incoming damage that's magic, you can immune it. So Revival, very, very good cooldown. Try to find a cooldown that's about a minute and a half on the other team and try to line up with that and you're going to be fine. You're going to be perfect. And those are pretty much our primary defensive cooldown or 
major healing cooldowns. Those are the three you're going to be rotating between to keep your teammates alive. Up until this point has been the easy part about Mistweaver, unfortunately. So the healing, healing rotation can be a little bit complex, but once you practice it, you can get it down. The hard part is, and the skill cap about Mistweaver is surviving and knowing how to survive and get away from people and create distance between you and the enemy team. So I'm going to go through our defensive cooldowns, kind of show you how to rotate your cooldowns and how to keep how, how to keep yourself and your team alive. So Dampen Harm reduces all damage you take by 20% to 50% for 10 seconds with larger attacks being reduced by more. So this is a 10 second buff, which is the long, I think four brew is what, 15. So this is our second longest buff that we get. That's a damage reduction. Usually I try to use Dampen Harm or Fort Brew before I get stunned. But one trick with Dampen Harm that you can do is it's actually not on your casting school. So what you can do is if you're being targeted, you can cast and if you get kicked, you can Dampen Harm. So use it to bait kicks when the, if there's kicks available, let's just say you're at like 50 or 60%. Maybe they have a stun incoming or something, or maybe they just stunned you and you, it, you just got out of a stun and they have kicks, get kicked, use Dampen Harm, kite away with your Chi Torpedo. Diffuse Magic. This one reduces magic damage you take by 60%, but only six seconds, and then reverses any dots you have on yourself to uh, whoever, whoever, you know, cast them. You know, if, if, if it's, there's no stable affliction on you, to go back to the Warlock. Uh, this is, again, for magic damage, really good when I, it's six seconds, so it's, it's not going to last through most stuns so i normally use this when i leave a stun or if i have some dots on me or if they're charging somebody else and i want to reduce damage on me i'll use diffuse magic it's it's a pretty good cooldown versus magic damage but it's very scary to use right before it's done because it probably will fade away fort brew so this turns your st your skin to stone for 15 seconds increase your your current and maximum health by 15 percent reduce all damage take by 20 percent and then depending on the talent you take here you might have increased armor and dodge chance. This lasts 15 seconds. So normally what I do with this is I will try to use it before I get stunned because it lasts so long. So normally it'll last the duration of the stun and then a little bit after, which buys you time and helps you stay alive. So between Fort Brew and Dampen Home, I kind of try to rotate when there's stuns available. Restore all you could use while stunned. No brainer. If you're playing against some kind of magic damage, use it when you get low and you can just be immune to magic damage. Ring of Peace, really good for kiting. Very, very essential for kiting. So if you have your port and you're on the pillar, you can just use your ROP to... I don't ROP and then stand in it. That, that's that's Because they people can still use mobility to get to you. Sometimes it doesn't register fast enough. So what I'll do is I'll put it on the corner. Like try to extend the pillar and make it so it's much more difficult for teammates to get to you and then get to the other side of the pillar and then heal. Don't don't ROP and stand in it because it just still makes it really easy for team teams to like interrupt you transcendent is by far the first cool you're going to want to use when you get stunned this makes it so especially when you're playing with eminence so if you think you're going to get trained play eminence oh i mean combat that's why eminence no okay we're not playing eminence then but you're going to have escape from reality either way so you're going to use have two ports so port and then once you leave the stun port back the reason you want to wait until you after the stun is because if you're playing eminence it's when you use your port while stunned, the cooldown doesn't get reduced. But if you use it outside of a stun, it reduces the cooldown by 15 seconds. So the second port is what it tr it triggers off of. So that's what you want. You want to be able. To, you want to, You want your second port to be after the stun. And I think that might be it. Oh, healing elixirs, healing elixirs. Yeah. So healing elixirs cost no mana, and it heals you for 15 percent of your max health. It's just that simple. So. Usually when I'm healing somebody or my team and we're getting low on health or, you know, they're getting low or there's some kind of cleave going out or, you know, spread damage, just healing elixir, double healing elixir. That's fine. Like it, it's good. It's good. It costs no mana. You can still heal your teammates. Perfect. So keep that in mind. It costs no mana. Very, very good. You can't use them all kicked. So that's also something to keep in mind. And then now with Zen spheres, if you're being targeted, try to put it up on somebody, you know, take 10% reduced damage from somebody. Just, yeah, just put on somebody. When if it gets a spell, just re replace it because it costs no mana and it costs and it's instant. So yeah, just keep applying it. I spoke about port placement a little bit, but very. I still want to make videos on where to put ports on certain maps. It's just so hard to find people for war games so I can record. But what you want to do is normally put your port on the pillar to make it hard for people to obviously get to you, and then don't stack on it, especially in the in the start of a game. Don't don't do that. Do, do not put stack on it. You want to stay away from your port. That way, if they go, you would try to CC you. You could port, and then you can kind of bait them and then port back. 
don't stack on your port. Otherwise, they're going to get a free go on you, and you're going to waste. Uh, you're going to have to waste a cooldown. Uh, port is a 35 second cooldown. 40 second. It's a 35 second cooldown, or 30 seconds with Eminence. I just, for some reason it's just not going for some, for me. Um, so it's it's the shortest cooldown you have, and I think it's one of the best ones. So keep that in mind. Just make sure you port first. Port placement. Put it behind the pillar. If you're being targeted, there is something you can do, and I'll show you real quick. You could use your first port here. So again, let's just assume you're behind the pillar. You put your port behind the pillar. The enemy team's hitting your teammates, and then they try to go you, right? So what you could do is you can kind of bait them out to the middle of the map because you don't want to kite enemies away from your teammates because your teammates can help you. But what you could do is you could port from the middle of the map, and if they chase you, let them. Let them chase you, and then port back to the middle of the map, and then roll. And then you just do that rinse and repeat. Uh, then you're across the map. It's really, really nice. It a lot of DPS will just give up trying to go you after that because they don't have the mobility if they use the mobility to get your first port. So make it very, very difficult for melee or anyone trying to train you to the ground to hit you. That's the fun game. If it, just play the game where if they hit you, you die. That's you know, use your ROP to make it so it's hard for them to get to you. Leg sweep to peel for yourself and then just roll away. Macros. And as always, I have my macros in the description. It's in my Discord. So please feel free to just take them. They're all yours. I have Arena 123 in cap macros or paralysis macros just because it's really I, I like I like having 123 macros. You can also have focus macros, which is what I have too, but I have like arena 123. I have the same thing for grapple weapon. Um, same thing with kicks. So I can kick anyone, in cap anybody, disarm anybody. I also have a focus kick as well life cocoon this is a very 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 important macro this will make it so you don't accidentally life cocoon somebody who's life cocoon yourself when somebody's dead like if you're an rbg or you won't life cocoon yourself if someone gets mind control or something like that so please use this macro it's this one right here i'll have it linked in the description take it and use it it's a very very good macro um it's, that's i mean i don't have too many macros i do have orbs for my cursor uh, or cursor macro for my orbs but, oh, Dispel 1 and 2 is really good to help Dispel your teammates. Really, really good to have uh, Dispel ASAP when your teammates are in CC or Roots or anything. Rop, this is an at cursor Rop, so you don't need to place it on the ground. You can just press it, and it goes off wherever your cursor is. Uh, That's pretty much it. I don't have much else. Oh, Tiger's Lost 2 for your teammates. This will make it so instead of... It's similar to the Dispel, so instead of Dispelling, you're going to Tiger's Lost. It's very, very good. Um... Also, I have one for myself because sometimes I'm not targeting myself to use Tiger's Lost, so I quickly do that. Try to make Todd work. Todd just don't want to work. And yeah, that, I mean, if you want the, this is a Transcendence World Marker uh, macro. So when you use Transcendence, it'll put a marker on it, but you need to be the leader of your group. And yeah, it's pretty good. I just got kind of, it just got so annoying having to press the marker over and over again. But, yeah, those are all my macros. I also have an accuracy for my statue. Oh, well, okay, so that one, all right. Uh, but, yeah, those are my macros. And then stop casting macro because stop casting will help it. So when you, it will help you juke a lot. Uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much it for my macros. I don't use too many. If you have any questions about macros or want a macro, let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any questions or make one for you. I'm more than happy to do that. But those are my macros. Best comps. So for cast and Mistweaver, you can pretty much play almost anything you want. Classes I avoid are Hunters, Mages, and Rogues. Hunters because Feign Death cancels your healing or it cancels your channeling. So you lose your stacks of Cloud of Focus. And then Mages and Rogues take a lot of damage. However, Frost Mage is really good. So usually Frost Mage Demo, Frost Mage Destro, anything like that that can help support you, I would just play it. You can still play Red Warrior. Turbo is good too. Anything where your teammates can keep themselves alive if you get stuck in crowd control is a good comp to play. I'm um, trying to think of anything else. Oh, Shadow Cleave, which is Demo Lock. DK is really good. Uh, TSG, which is DK Warrior. Turbo, which is Enhancement Shaman Warrior. Anything like that, you could play. In twos, I like playing with Demo Locks and Warriors. Those are my favorite ones to play with. Um, maybe Ellie Shaman, but it's they they kind of get run over by rogues and if rogues are good they're going to struggle but pretty much anything that's tanky just try to heal and you'll be fine all right so i've never done this section before ever so this is my first time bear with me this is a tips and tricks section of the video where i'm just going to go run through some tips tricks some maybe some things that you didn't know about about Mistweaver and interactions kind of help you out things that have helped me first one is use provoke I know it sounds weird. Provoke is a taunt, but what provoke can do 
is it can break your CC, help you break CC. So like I mentioned in my macros, uh, part of the video, I could show you real quick. Here's this a taunt it's infernals. Actually, I don't need Kevin anymore. And what this uh, provoke macro does is a taunt pets. And if you can get the, the timing right, you can taunt a hunter pet to break your trap. So use your provoke. It's also really good for just like taking damage off your DPS. I'll normally taunt almost as much as I can. I have I used to have it macroed into everything uh, until I raided and I taunted the boss and died. So uh, you could just macro it into you know something or you know make a keybind for it. Put that macro there and then taunt whenever you can. If you get kicked, you can still use some of your spells. This is really important for when you're being targeted. If you're if you're kicked, right? Oh no, I got kicked. You could still roll. You could still in cap. You could still leg sweep. So, and you could still fort brew. So keep that in mind. If you're getting targeted by like a warrior or something, you know, tigers out yourself and still run away. Oh no, he got to me. Let me roll away. You know, let me, let me roll away. And now all of a sudden my lockout's over and now you could port or something like that. So keep, again, keep that in mind. You, there's stuff you could do while you're kicked. And, and it, it, this also goes for like root beam as well from balance druids in case you didn't know if you get root beamed you can still paralysis so if the boomy is close enough to you and they're trying to cyclone off the root beam you could just in cap them I, there's so many boomies that don't seem to know that and you could catch them off guard with it it's really really handy you can disarm hunters to stop them from kicking you okay if you're playing against a hunter and you know let's just say you get playing against jungle or something and you're outranging the, the feral druid but the hunter has a kick available you could disarm the hunter and then just free cast. Hunters need their their weapon to kick. So as long as they're disarmed, you could free cast. I don't know if this is a bug. And we're not going to talk about it too, too much. But if you port, so you have two ports right now with Escape from Reality. If you port and you get kicked with this Escape from Reality buffed, you could still port while, you could port while kicked. I found that out in beta. And I don't know... If it's a bug or not, but I have used it quite a bit. So uh, keep that in mind. It's really, really good for when, you know, you just want to eat a kick, but you can still port. If you want to break someone's ankles around the map, what you could do with your double port is you could port, reset your port, roll away, and if they try to get back to you, port again. They will... They will have no idea what just happened. They will have no freaking clue what just happened. And I love it. So just do it. You always want to kind of mess around when it comes to your port. You know, always make them, you know, guess where your port is. Always move around your port around the map. And uh, that's one of the best ways where you could do it. And that is pretty much it. I will put a game or two at the end of this video to kind of show you the feel of how you should play and how you should position. But if you have any questions at all, please let me know. I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And that is it for me. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of the day. Hope you enjoy the video. And I'll see you later. Uh, Hunter, I don't think Hunter wants to play down here anymore. <laughs> True shot? Oh, no, not the pet. Not the pet! No. I'm scared to go up here. Whoa, I didn't know Scatter had that long of range. Holy shit! This guy's parkouring! Route this guy so we can't line. Panda off. Sweep this. Go, my friend. I believe. I'll oh, Yulon here. No. Don't know what the plan is. I'm going to be honest. Can we just kill this guy? Todd? Ooh -hoo -hoo! In cap. Nice cocoon. Song this. I get a song on both. A little double song. Might even go for a little sweep here too. Port this poly. I got that poly. I get that poly. 
Is that focus T here? We're chilling. We're chilling. Incap on me. DR is with uh thing. Feared full is kind of annoying. Silence. I see you. Do I put... I got to put the Zen Sphere up first. It's so bad. Incap after that lockout. Song here. On everything. Experience tranquility. Polyfull. We're just polyfull now these days, huh? Stunned. All right. Sounds off. Nah. <laughs> Big healing here. Uh, it was Zen Sphere on, on this fella. And uh, we're going in hot here. One solo mission. I'll panda off. Kick that. Bro, how could you not love playing caster? Like, I freaking love Miss Weaver so much. I'm just out here just chilling. Monk's oom, though. Monk's struggling. Monk, pff, mage is dead. 